Well, hello there. I'm John Dobbs. I'm the preaching minister at Forsyth Church of Christ. And as Daniel said, we're really glad that you're spending this time with us. And we hope that you had a great Thanksgiving week. And as we come to the end of that week and enter into the Christmas season, I want us to remember that Thanksgiving is not just something that we do one time a year or one week a year. It's, it's really a part of the Christian's life for all time. And so the Bible has a lot to say about Thanksgiving. And I want to spend a few minutes with a psalm this morning, Psalm 100. And I want to begin by just reading over that with you, and then we'll make some, uh, have some thoughts about that. Psalm 100 says, Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before Him with joyful songs. Know that the Lord is God. It is He who made us and we are His. We're His people, the sheep of His pasture. Enter His gates with thanksgiving and His courts with praise. Give thanks to Him and praise His name, for the Lord is good and His love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. And so as we read through that, there's so many expressions of thanksgiving and, and praise there that I want to just spend a few minutes looking at Eight quick thoughts about giving thanks from Psalm 100. So we're going to hit eight high points here in this short psalm and, and let it remind us to, to be moved, to be thankful. And the first one is, is to give thanks aloud. He begins with, shout for joy to God, all the earth. And so we have this, uh, this expression of shouting or making, uh, uh, making noise. The King James Version says, make a joyful noise, all the earth. And so... We want to make noise. We want to say out loud to God how thankful we are for our many blessings. And when we give thanks uh, out loud, we're affirming our uh, faith in the Lord and, and our gratitude for all that He's done for us. But also when we uh, use expressions of thanks in our conversation, we help other people to be thankful. We kind of remind them to be grateful for what they have. And it's all the earth, he says. I think about what if everybody on earth expressed thanks. What a, a beautiful noise that would make for the Lord. And so we want to be a part of that crowd that's always saying thank you to speaking words of thanksgiving out loud. So first, give thanks aloud and then give thanks in worship. He says to worship the Lord with gladness. And all we have to do is really think about who God is and what he's done for us to how he's blessed us to be offering up worship with gladness. So I want to encourage you, even though on this, uh, if you're watching this on a Sunday morning from your home, I'm glad we have that opportunity. <clears throat> but I do want to encourage you to, to think about gathering with a church family because there's something about being in the room with other believers, hearing their voices, uh, letting them smile at you and have some conversation. It reminds us that we're not alone and that, that God is so good. He's provided a wonderful church family for us to, to be with and give thanks. So there's that kind of worship. There's also worship that we express to God on our own during our private devotions or just spending time thinking and thanking God for all He's done. In 2 Timothy 2 and verse 1, Apostle Paul wrote, I urge then, first of all, that petitions, prayers, intercession, and thanksgiving be made for all people. And so we want to give thanks to God in worship. So give thanks aloud and give thanks in worship and give thanks in song. Uh, verse 2 of our, our psalm says, Come before Him with joyful songs. So we should allow words of praise to fill our mouth and our minds and our hearts and express that in song. And, and no doubt on this Sunday, uh, so close to Thanksgiving and Christmas, many churches will sing a song we know as doxology. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him all creatures here below. Praise Him above, ye heavenly hosts. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. And the scriptures, of course, we could we could fill an hour with scriptures about praise and honoring God in song. In Psalm 147 and verse 1, the Bible says, Praise the Lord, and how good it is to sing praises to our God. How pleasant and fitting to praise Him. And I really do think and believe that when we sing words of praise, we're affecting our heart and our mind and the way we think about things. 
Let's think about if you hear a sad song, how it makes you feel sad. Or, uh, you know, a certain other happy song makes you feel happy. When we sing songs of praise, it makes us feel worshipful. So give thanks in song. The Lord's brother James in James chapter 5 and verse 13 said, Is anyone happy? Then let them sing songs of praise. So another point in this uh, psalm I see here about giving thanks is that we're to give thanks for his care. In verse 3 it says, It is he who made us, and we are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. And so we thank God for his, his care, his mercy in our life, the way that he loves us and takes care of us and blesses us. In 1 Timothy 4 and verse 4, uh, it says that for everything God created is good and nothing is to be rejected if it is received with thanksgiving. So we receive with thanksgiving all the blessings that God has provided for us. And one of those is just that's belonging. We are his. And, and it's one of the most beautiful pictures in the Bible that's uh, of a shepherd and his sheep. A shepherd is tender and loving and caring for his sheep. He's uh, taking care of the flock. He leads them besides still waters. He, he takes, makes sure that they have something to eat. When they go astray, he makes sure that they're found and brought back. And so is it any wonder that David wrote, The Lord is my shepherd. And in this text, we have that expression, We're his people, the sheep of his pasture. And it expresses the great care that God has for us. And we're thankful for that. In 1 Peter 5 and verse 7, it says, Cast all your anxiety on Him because He cares for you. And I love that idea. And it's one of my favorite verses that we we cast our cares, our anxieties on Him. And we're grateful for the Creator's concern and care for us. So we give thanks for His care. And then we give thanks for His presence. Verse 4 says, Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise and give thanks to him and praise his name. And so it's a picture of coming into the, the temple of God, coming through the gates, coming into his presence. And, uh, and so that reminds me that God is not remote. He's not out there somewhere. He's near. He's with us. And he's glad to be with us. And we enter his gates and his courts with praise. And whenever you think that God seems far away, I want to encourage you to write down some praises of God, some things about God that you love, some things that give you comfort and strength. And that's a pathway into remembering the presence of God, that all these things are here because God is with us. Psalm 1611 says, You make known the path of life. You fill me with joy in your presence, with eternal pleasures at your right hand. So we have this picture of God's presence. And then give thanks for the goodness of God. The goodness of God. Verse 5 says, for the Lord is good. As you read through scriptures, the nations around Israel, uh, they all had a a lot of gods and they didn't always think their gods were good. In fact, there were, uh, some of them were kind, but many of them were feared and and the, the idol worshipers would make great sacrifices to them, trying to appease them, trying to keep them from doing something terrible to them. And so Israel could enter into the temple with thanksgiving because God is good. And, and they had a different relationship with God than these idol worshipers did with their gods. Israel's God cares. He provides. He protects. He loves. And so God is good to us in so many ways and never more than when He sent Jesus to be our Savior. We recognize the goodness of God, that He always wants the best for us. And when we remember that, we give thanks. And another thing we see in this psalm is we give thanks for His love. Verse 5 says, His love endures forever. (laughs) Love's kind of a cloudy thing for human beings. We, We use that word love all the time. We love hamburgers and pizza. We love... Uh, Maybe we don't love turkey this week after we ate so much of it, but next year we'll love turkey again. But we love things, you know, and we use that word. And people talk about falling in love and falling out of love. And and love uh, is, is kind of cloudy for us, as I say. But with God, love is sure, it is clear, it is everlasting. Psalm 136, if you read that sometime, it it emphasizes the permanence of God's 
love. Over and over again, it says, His love endures forever. And that's the kind of love that God has for us, a love that never ends. And the end of that psalm says, Give thanks to the God of heaven, His love endures forever. And so when we realize how great God's love is, it does move us to give thanks. And we are grateful for that. And God's intention uh, is for His love to last forever. And one reason is because God is love. The Bible says He is love. So this is what He does. It's His nature to love. And God chose to love us. None of us deserve the love of God. None of us have earned it. He just chose to give it to us. And we're grateful for that. And God's intention is for us to live with Him forever. And so God's love is not just while we're here on this earth. It's something that lasts forever. And Jesus said in John chapter 14, My Father's house has many rooms, and if that were not so, I would have told you. Uh, and I'm going there to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, that you may also be where I am. And so God's love is settled into a plan that says, I love you and I want you to live with me forever. And so his love endures forever. And then toward the end of this psalm, we give thanks for his faithfulness. His faithfulness continues throughout all generations. Every generation that comes along on this earth is, uh, is a generation that's loved by God. Psalm 100 uh, I mean, Hebrews 13 and verse 8 says, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. His love continues on through the next generation for our children and our grandchildren and their grandchildren. And on and on we can go through the generations. God's love is always there. It never fails. It never fades. His promises don't rest. His strength never diminishes. He, his commitment has no end date. And you know, we're, we're not faithful always. I know that we struggle, we fail at times, but even when we're struggling, God's love continues on unwavering. His, his mind is made up. He loves you, and you can't talk Him out of it, no matter how hard you try. I saw a meme one time that said, you know, that God, I've given God a million chances not to love me, and He hasn't taken one of them yet. And that's so true. So that's eight reasons from one psalm as to why we're thankful to God. And because of who God is, we can be thankful in every circumstances, circumstance. And that's why Thanksgiving is not just a once a year gathering of friends and family. It's not just a one time a year remembrance. It's a part of the Christian's daily life. We never want to stop giving thanks. Every day is Thanksgiving Day for God's people. I was reading a story, and actually in preparation for this lesson, I saw this story several times, so you may have already heard it at some time or another, but uh, the great preacher and Bible commentator Matthew Henry was, uh, wrote a famous commentary about the Bible. And anyway, one time he was traveling to, to preach somewhere, and he was robbed. And most people would have been very upset and even despondent, but, but Henry wrote in his diary these words. He said, I am thankful. I'm thankful that during these years I've never been robbed before. I'm thankful that even though they took my money, they only took my money and didn't take my life. They took all I had, but it wasn't much. And finally, I'm thankful that it was I who was robbed and not I who robbed. What a perspective to even in that terrible circumstance to try to find some reason to be thankful. What are you thankful for today? Let's pray together. God, thank you for every person that's gathered here today. And, and as we spend time with this beautiful psalm that helps us to remember to be thankful. I, I pray that you would help each one of us to embrace a spirit of gratitude. We, we aren't always grateful. Sometimes we're spoiled. We confess that we, we, we focus too much on things and it causes us to be uh, not as grateful as we, we should be. Help us, Father, to remember these wonderful teachings of Psalm 100 and help us to enter your gates with thanksgiving and with praise and with joy 
and to realize that's where real life is. For those who are hurting on this holiday season, I pray that you would bless them, help them to look up, to lift up their eyes and look around and see that there's still so much, even in a time of sadness, there's so much to be thankful for. And mostly, it's you. And so thank you, Father. Thank you for your presence, your mercy, your grace, the way you love us so deeply and so consistently. And help us, Father, to give and express that love to the people around us. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen.